You may or may not have heard that recently Congress voted to renew the expiring provisions of the USA Patriot Act. Now, this went widely unreported by the media and was not really discussed by political representatives. In fact, in uh, Congress, it was entertained by all of a 30-minute debate before the provisions were renewed. Um, now, while that took place, uh, one senator, Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat from Oregon, who's also a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee, said, quote, I want to deliver a warning this afternoon. When the American people find out how their government has secretly interpreted the Patriot Act, they will be stunned and they will be angry, end quote. Now, Senator Wyden is relaying a concern held by a few members of the Senate Intelligence Committee and that the government is actually interpreting the Patriot Act in far broader ways than the Patriot Act itself um, dictates. And the Patriot Act itself, as I'm going to go into, is already broad in and of itself. Now, what is the big deal about the Patriot Act? Um, well, there are a few provisions that were recently renewed that are the centers of the problem. Um, first is Section 215, and Section 215 says that, or allows the government to obtain any tangible evidence relevant to a terrorism investigation, even if there's no showing that the thing is actually related to the subject of the investigation, um, of the terrorist or the terrorist activities, in other words. And traditionally and under the Constitution, in order for the government to be able to obtain such evidence, they would need reasonable suspicion or probable cause, or at least some sort of a nexus to show that there's a connection between what they want to seize and what it is uh, being investigated. Another provision of the Patriot Act is Section 206, and this is also known as the Roving John Doe Wiretap Provision, which allows the government to get intelligence surveillance orders on anybody or anything without having to specify the person or the thing that they want to survey. Now again, under the Constitution, uh, they're usually required that to state with particularity what they seek to survey, whether it's a person or a property or a place. Um, they're usually supposed to specify that. Under the Patriot Act, they don't have to. Um, the bill also, uh, or the Patriot Act also has provisions regarding national security letters, which this was also renewed and needs to be amended. The national security letters allow the government to obtain communications, financial and credit records of anyone deemed relevant to a terrorism, terrorism investigation, even if that person was not suspected of any criminal behavior. Um, this has led to tens of thousands of people every year um, uh, being issued NSLs, National Security le Letters, and usually these people are two, three times or maybe even more removed from the actual subject of the investigation. Now, in a letter to Senator Harry Reid, an assistant attorney general from the Department of Justice issued findings from the year tw 2010 in regards to um, how this all plays out, how the Patriot Act plays out in our everyday lives. And um, what he stated is somewhat troubling in that the Foreign Intelligence Surve Surveillance Courts, these are courts designated under a specific act under federal law to actually issue orders permitting the government to obtain evidence or to survey individuals. Um, this is a specially designated court that does this. Um, under the Patriot Act, uh, 1,579 applications were made to these courts for authority to conduct electronic surveillance or physical surveillance of places or persons. Um, of those 1,579 applications, zero were denied by the court, which means that essentially the court acted as a rubber stamp for whatever surveillance applications the government agency would apply for. Um, in addition to that, 96 applications were made to these courts for access to certain business records. These records can include lease agreements, they can even be apartment keys or anything tangible really for foreign intelligence purposes. These courts did also did not deny any of these applications, neither in whole or in part. Um, and additionally, in 2010, the FBI made requests for national security letters on 24,287 persons residing in the United States, having to deal with uh, information pertaining to 14,212 different persons re residing in the United States. 
So all of this is very troubling in that Congress chose to reenact these provisions once again for another four years. We're stuck with them. Now what can we do about it? Um, if, you, uh, if you are troubled, as troubled about this as we are, we recommend contacting your uh, political representatives and letting them know that you, uh, that you do not want these provisions in our laws and that they should act immediately to repeal these provisions. Um, otherwise, we're stuck with them for at least the next four years. So that's it for today. Stay tuned for next week where we'll be discussing another civil rights issue.